Hi guys, I'm going to tell you about the add-on modules of Fedina today. So add-on modules are the extra functionalities that you see besides the basic functionalities in Fedina. Uh, basic functionalities are called as the core modules in Fedina. Today we're going to look, look at the add-on modules or the plugins in Fedina. So uh, first plugin is Data Palette. So the interface that you see here the boxes, these are known as dashlets. Each of these box is called as a dashlet and each of this is giving you some information about your institution. This is because of data palette plugin. The second plugin is theme. So we have to go to administration. We have to go to settings and here general settings. And you will get this option to select theme and font. This is because of the theme plugin. So you can change the color and you can even change the font. The third plugin is Moodle. So here you will get this option to enter the Moodle URL. The Moodle is used as a learning management system. So here you can give the link of the server where you have installed Moodle. Once you do that, whenever you admit a student in Fedina, the same student will be admitted automatically in Moodle. So this is the use of integrating Moodle with Fedina. The next plugin is mobile plugin of Fedina, where you will be able to see Fedina as a mobile version. The next plugin is gallery. So we have to go to academics, sorry, collaboration, and here gallery. And as an admin or as someone with gallery admin privilege, I can create a new category. New category like I have created here, Teachers Day, Independence Day and so on. And in that category, I can add photos by clicking here. Other users will only be able to view the photo. The next plugin is OAuth. So you have to go to accounts.fedina.com and you have to log in with your username and password and you have to go to company and you have to go to plugin settings Google OAuth. Now here you need to enter the client key and secret. Now this client key and client secret is obtained by a series of steps that you're going to found, find in support.fedina.com so there you can go and you can search OAuth and these are the series of there are a few series of steps that you need to follow and you will get client key and client secret that you have to enter here. Once you have done that, you will see that on the login screen, you will get this option, sign in using your Google account. So it is going to ask you the username and password and you can log in. So this is about the OAuth plugin. Then we have OAuth to provider plugin. If you enable that from your account, you can go to administrator and settings and here manage clients option will appear. So what we are doing is we want to give access to the third party applications to be able to access Fedina data. So we are registering that application by going to manage clients. Now we have to click on new. It is going to ask me the name of the application the URI where it is hosted and whether it is verified by Fedina or not. So when you do this, this application, this third party application will be able to access Fedina data. It is going to get this client ID and client secret that has to be used in the third party application so that it can access Fedina data. This ID and secret is automatically generated when you add a new client. So this is particular to the third party application and has to be used so that the third party application can access Fedina data. Now in case this application, this third party application that is using Fedina data, you want to show it inside Fedina or you want to embed it, embed its interface inside Fedina, you have to go to apps. This apps tab will appear when you enable app frame.
plugin of a dinner. So you have to go to manage apps and here you have to click on new. You have to give the name of the third party application as it is going to appear for the other users. You have to give the URL which is the first page that should be appearing for the users and the client that you just registered for will appear here. And then who all you want to give the privilege to. So who all will be able to access this third party application. So once you do this, you can go to apps and this is how, because we have given the name as ABC, so it is appearing like, like here. So all the users are going to get it under apps and this, when you click on it, that interface of the third party application is going to appear here. After this, we have the big blue button plugin. So we can go to collaboration and collaborate is the link which will appear when you enable big blue button from the SaaS account. So you can click on collaborate. Big blue button is used when you want to do video conferencing using Fidina. So for that you have to install big blue button in one of the servers. You can even try out the demo by going to bigbluebutton.org and here demo. The same interface is what you're going to get inside Fidina. So you can try out the demo and you can then install Big Blue Button in one of the servers. And after you do that, you have to go to servers and new server. You have to give the name, URL and the salt ID as provided to you by Big Blue Button. Once you save these changes, you can create a new online meeting by clicking on new here. So here we are creating online meeting. We have to give the name. We have to give the server that we just added and we have to select the department and the course. So this is, these are the participants that we are selecting for this online meeting. And then we have to select when is this meeting sh scheduled. So this is about the big blue button plugin. After that we have the payment, online payment plugin in Fedina, which is pay. So we have to go to administration and online payment. And here we need to do some settings. So the enable online payment option is for student fees, for the applicant registration module, hostel fees and transport fee. The gateways that are available are Paypal and Authorize.net. Once you register with Paypal, they are going to give you Paypal ID which can be used. And once you register with Authorize.net, you are going to get Merchant ID and trans Transaction Password which can be entered. Once these settings are done, the students will be able to pay the fees online as per what model you have selected here. So let me log in as one of the students and show you how the student is going to get an option for fee payment in his profile. So he can go to his profile and he can go to more and fees. And here he will get the fees that he is yet to pay. He can click on that and if the online payment plugin is enabled and the settings are done, pay fee option will be appearing for the student. He can click here and it is going to redirect him to the gateway as per the settings. The same interface will also appear for the parent. Let me log in back as admin. So this is about the online payment plugin. Then we have the blog so we can go to collaboration and here we can go to blog. Now as an admin I cannot create my blog. So if I click on this my blog it is going to give me an error administrator cannot participate in blogging. So I'm going to log out and log in as an employee or as a student who can create their blogs. So I can go to collaboration 
and blog and here my blog so the first step is I need to create my blog so I can I can go to settings and here I can give the name of my blog this name has to be a unique name to be able to so that you, your blog gets identified and whether it's, it is published or not so the status of the blog and then I can create posts in my blog by clicking on my blog and new post so here I can give a title I can give some body and whether I want to publish it or I want to save it for later publishing I can even see the activities so who all have commented on my posts can also be viewed the blogs the blog posts can also be marked favorites by clicking here So this is about the blog module. Then we have assignment. Assignment will be applicable to the teachers who are teaching a particular subject in a course. Assignment link will not be available to the admin. So I've logged in as an employee. So I'm going to show you where this employee will be able to create assignments. So you have to go to academics and you have to go to assignment and the subjects this employee is taking will be appearing. So this employee is taking history in this batch K1B 2014 and another subject exceptions in this batch ADSC Java. So I can click on the subject. I can see the assignments that I've already given here or I can create a new assignment so I can give a title of the assignment I can select for which subject I am giving I can select the students who all will be submitting the assignment to me I can give the description of the assignment or if it is longer I can even attach a file and what is the due date the so last date of submission of the assignment so once this is created, let me log in as one of the students there who got this assignment. They can go to academics and assignment and they will be able to see this assignment by clicking on it. And they can answer this assignment by again giving some title, content or attaching a file. And once it is submitted, the employee who created this assignment for the student will be able to accept or reject this answer. Once the answer is accepted, the student cannot edit it. So this is about the assignment plugin. Then we have discipline. Discipline can be achieved, can be seen by going to academics and discipline here. And here clicking on new. So discipline module is used when a set of students are complaining against another set of students or one student is complaining against another student. So the admin has to log in the complaint of the students. So the complaint number will be automatically generated. You have to give the title, description and the trial date of this complaint and who are the participants so complaint by which is a student so the student can be searched like this complaint against which is another student jury is the person who's going to take the decision on this discipline and then responsible officials so these are the persons who will be able to comment on this discussion on this discipline issue attachments for more details can also be attached so once this is done the discipline issue will appear like this you can see the status to be pending trial date and all the other details and comments can be added by the four users that you see here the four participants that you see here 
So as this employee who is the jury E1 or as someone with discipline plug-in, with discipline privilege, I can close this issue. So I can write the verdict here, comments and who all are the convicted users. If there are more than one, they can also be selected and it can be closed. So this is about the discipline plugin in Fadina. The next one that we are going to see is data management. So we have to go to data and reports, data management. And here, data management is when you want to keep records of some data of your institution. For example, computer lab details. So who is the employee? What is the computer that he is assigned? You can see these details are put here. But to be able to put these details, you have to first create this template, which is employee ID, computer name. So for that, you have to click on this new here. Give the name. Let me show for the one that is already existing. So I've given the name as computer lab and some description. And then what are the fields and what will be the input type of the fields. For example, for employee ID, I will be able to enter the employee ID in a box, similarly for computer name. So these are the fields that I'm creating. And inside, when I click on this new entry, I will be asked the data like this. So we are creating these records and they can be printed as well. So next we are going to see some finance related plugins. So we have to go to administration, finance and here we are going to go inside fees and fee imports is one of the very important plugins in Fedina. Fee import is used when a student is joining a batch after you have scheduled the fee collection for that batch. So the general flow in Fadina is you admit all the students in a batch and then you schedule the fee collection for them. But sometimes a student may be a late joinee. In that case, you, you are going to admit that student in a batch in Fadina using the normal process. And the fee collection for that student will already be created, but it has to be assigned by going to fee import. So you have to select the batch in which you just admitted the student. And all the students of that batch are going to appear on the left hand side. The new student, you have to select that new student and you have to assign the fee collection for that student. So here you can see that all the students are appearing and if there's a new student, for that student these collections will not be assigned. So you have to select them and assign them and then you can collect the fees from this student. So this is about the fee import plugin. Then the other plugin is instant fee. So here, we, this instant fee is used when you have some fees which is besides the normal fee. For example, you have to create, you have to take relief fund, some Christmas celebrations, Teacher's Day and so on. So let me show you for one of the categories here. So these are the particulars that I've created with some amounts. I can add a particular like this by selecting the category give the name of the particular and the amount and then a, this fees can be created, can be collected from student, employee or a guest. So here you will get this option pay fees and it can be collected from student, employee or a guest. So let me find a student and for this student 
I will select what he should be paying for and it is going to appear like this. If there is some particular that is only applicable to this student, I can add that particular here and pay the fees. These are the payment modes that are available. And these payment modes will be also can also be seen in the receipt. So this is about instant fee. We can even see the transactions for a particular category. So it shows you who has paid how much amount for instant fee and on what date and what is the mode of payment. The next plugin that we are going to see is Tally Export. So you can sync Tally which is financial software with Fidina. So any transaction that you do in Fidina after syncing with Tally is going to get reflected in your software as well. So first thing you have to do the settings, the general settings and you have to give the URL along with the port number of where your Tally is installed. If you want to enable live sync, meaning that every time you do a transaction it is going to get synced in Tally after some time. So that is live sync. So you can set the start date and you can enable live sync. These organizations, they are same as is the nomenclature in Tally. So you can create that organization. You can create the vouchers. So they are also same and also the accounts. So these are the terms in Tally. They have to be exactly same as what you're using in Tally. Then ledgers. So you can create a ledger. So let me show you a ledger that I've already created which is for employee salary. So you have to give here the name as employee salary, company, what you just created, voucher and the account. So these three will be exactly same as you have in Tally. And then what are the transaction categories? It means whenever you approve a salary of an employee, it is going to get synced in the tally server as well. So in this way you can create ledgers for each and every category here. And whenever you make a change, that ledger will that ledger change will also be reflected in the tally application in the in your server. If you do not want to enable live sync, you can even sync manually by going to manual sync and you can set the start and end date of the syncing. You can even get the data in the form of XML or Excel. For example, I've exported this file in the form of XML. So this is the data tally data and then we have we can even see the failed syncs so in case there is any issue during syncing with the server with the tally server that issue can be seen for a particular date here the next plugin that we are going to see is Paul so we can go to collaboration and Paul. So polling is used when you take an opinion of a set of users on a particular subject. So you can create a new poll. You can give the question title, description and possible answers. And if you want to allow written answers, so besides selecting these options, the user will also be given an option to write their own answer. And you can select this if you want the users to be able to give vote. So open for polling. And then who all are the participants of the poll. So you can select those batches and you can select those departments. 
once you post the poll, it is going to appear like this. The user has to click on it and they will get an option to mark one of the, like here, they, they are getting an option to mark one of the options as their answer and they can vote for it. Once they vote, they can see the result like this. So for which option, how many votes are given by the users, by the participants will be appearing. Also the number of votes can also be viewed from here. After this we have the placement plugin of Fedina. So we have to go to academics and here placement. So placement is used when a company or a set of companies is recruiting from your institution. So you can announce that placement, invite students, students can participate in the placement and then you can declare their results of the placement. So first step is to announce a new placement. So you can give a title like placement drive for the name of the company. On which date is the placement going to happen? So on which date will the interviews or the tests going to happen? What is the company name? And the job description of the co company can be pasted in the description box here. So we have created the placement. The next step is to invite the students for this placement drive. So we can click on this invite students and it is going to give me an option to select batches and from the batches I can select the students who can attend this placement. So I'm going to select the batch and select the students who are eligible for this placement. So more than one batch can also be there so I'm going to select another batch and select all so they are going to get added in this list. So I can click on invite and now I'm going to log in as one of the student. So let me just see the admission number of that student. So this is that student who has got the invitation for the placement and the student can go to academics and placement and here you will see this placement drive option is appearing. He can click on it. He can see the job description here and view the invitation and he can apply for this placement. Once this student has applied, the admin will be able to approve his application by going to academics, placement and clicking on the placement name and clicking on registrations. And here you can see that for this student, it is giving an option of approving registration or rejecting it. Once it is approved, here this option will get enabled, attended or not attended, only on the day of this placement. So let's say this option is enabled. When I click on it, here an option will appear of approving the placement status. Approving would mean that this student is placed or is recruited by the company. So this is how the placements can be announced and the student will be able to see the result in his profile as well. So this is about the placement module. We can even archive the placements by going to archived placements here or by clicking here and archive this event. So when we archive it, we can see 
the list of archive placements by going here. So the next plugin that we are going to see would be the tasks plugin. So we have to go to collaboration and tasks. So tasks can be assigned to another user by clicking on new task. This option will be appearing for anyone with task management privilege. Otherwise, the user is only going to get tasks assigned to me. He will not be able to assign tasks to anyone else. So new task option is appearing. I can give the title, some description. I can attach a file in case a description is longer. I can select the department who all will be the participants. So it can be the students, it can be the employees as well. And then the start and end date of this task. So I can save it. And I'm going to log in as one of the students now. So for this placement, let me see some other student. So here, okay, sorry, this is an employee, so let's see the employee ID of this employee and I'm going to log in as this employee. And this employee can go to collaboration and he can go to tasks here and this task that is assigned to this employee is going to appear here and you can see the status it shows as assigned to view the details it can be clicked and the status assigned and what is the due date of this task will be appearing and this employee can post an update or even attach a file for more details so this is how it is going to appear for the participants the students or the employees. Let me log in back as an admin and once an employee or the student is posting an update it is also going to come to the admin so he can go to tasks and he can click on this and he will be able to see the updates here and he can mark this task as completed. Once it is marked as completed you will see the status to be changed here and the same will be appearing for the students and the employees who are participants in this task. It can be reassigned by clicking on mark as assigned. So this is about the tasks management plugin of Fedina. The next one is discussion. So we can go to collaboration and discussion here. And here groups of discussion can be created and a group can have a restricted number of employees and students. So this create group option will be appearing for admin or anyone with discussion privilege. So he can create a group, he can give some group name, he can give the department, so these all are the participants of this group. So they all will be able to comment on the posts in this group. So once this group is created it is going to appear like here. For example let's say this is the group. So these are the members and any member, any member in this group can create posts which, which will be shareable to all the other members. So title can be given, description can be given and image or document can be uploaded and comments can also be posted on the existing discussions. 
So if I click on this post which is already put by someone, I can give a comment here. And I can see the other comments as well. So this is about the discussion plugin. Then we have document manager plugin. So for that we have to go to collaboration and documents. And here we can create documents, folders, privileged documents or user specific documents. So this option will be coming for administration administrator or anyone with document management privilege. So to create a shareable document you have to click on this document. Select the department with whom you want to share this document. Select the batch. So if you want to share it with students as well you can select that. Give the document name. Choose the file and submit it. You can share more than one file at a time by adding files here. So all these users will be able to view the file. The next one is folder. So you can create a shareable folder. You can give the name of the folder. Select the department and the batch for whom this fo folder is visible and add documents to this folder. So we are sharing the full folder in this case. The third option is privileged docs. So here we are going to create a folder and these users that I'm selecting, these all users will be able to upload in this folder. So it's like we are creating a common folder with upload privilege to the selected employees. You can see this is only for the employees. It is not applicable for the students. The fourth option is user specific docs. So here let's say you want to keep a record of previous educational documents of a batch. So you can create a folder like this and since it will have student related documents you can select the category to be student and once you can submit it. Now to be able to put documents inside this specific to a user, specific to a student, you have to go to user docs here, search the student and the folder will appear for the student. Click on it, it will be empty and you can add the documents, the educational previous education documents for this user. So again if you select another user, you can again enter the documents. So this is specific to a user. This folder that we created by going to user specific docs is specific to a user. The same can be done for employee as well. And here you will see these options here. So these docs, my docs are the ones that are created by me. So it can be anything. It can be a shared folder. It can be a normal shared document. Or it can be a folder with upload privilege. So all these are appearing. So these are my docs. Shared docs are the ones that are shared with me. So with the logged in user. Privilege docs are the folders where I can upload. So where the logged in user is given upload privilege. And favorite docs are the docs that I've favorited. Recent docs, the docs that I've opened recently. So this is about the document manager plugin in Fedina. The next one would be Google Doc plugin of Fedina. So once you enable that from the admin panel, you will see this link in collaboration which is Google Docs. And once you click on it, it is going to show you the documents that you have inside your Google Drive when you log in through your personal mail account. 
to check your personal mail account, you have to go to this avatar here, click on your name and here you will see this email. So this is the one whose Google Drive is shown in Google Docs. And again, for this to be appearing, you have to do Google OAuth settings. Once the Google OAuth settings are done, then Google Docs will be synced and you will be able to see them in Google Docs. Any change that you make here, so if you upload a document, it will be uploaded in your Google Drive automatically and vice versa as well. So this is about the Google Doc plugin. The next one is email alert. So you can go to collaboration and email. So the first step before doing the settings in email is to go to your accounts.fedina.com and there under company you're going to get here email as an option and you have to contact a third party provider who is going to give you the fields and the details of email and you have to enter them and once you have done that once you have configured the email you have to come to settings here in email alert and inside settings you will be able to see when all automatic email is sent in Fedina. So emails can be automatically sent or they can be manually sent to employees, students or guardians. So let us see when all we can send automatic emails. So these are the events that will be displayed and this also shows who all will be getting the automatic email. Will it be the student and the parent or both? So you can select them as per the need. So these are the events when automatic email is sent. Now to be able to send manual email, you have to go to employees or students or guardians. You have to select the department, select the employee, mention the subject and the message and send it. So this employee, he will be having some personal mail ID in his profile and to that mail ID, this message will be sent. Similarly for students and guardians, now students will get an extra option in the email subject body where they can unsubscribe. So they will get an option to unsubscribe and when the students click on it, they will be added to the unsubscription list which can be viewed by the admin and the admin can resubscribe the student back. So this is about the email alert plugin in Fedina. The next one that we are going to see is data export. So for data export, we have to go to data and reports and under that data export. And here, data export is used to take backup of your data from Fedina. So we can click on new here and all these options are there for which you can get the backup of the data. For example, for employee personal details, for student personal details and so on. And you can get the format as a CSV format or XML format. Important point to note here is that you can for a particular model, let's say for attendance, you will be able to export the data only once in a period of 30 days. The reason is because export is a longer process. There is a lot of data from Fedina, so it is only allowed once in 30 days. So data export is used when you want to take a backup of data once in 30 days. The next one is custom report. 
So we have to go to date train reports and custom report. And here custom report is used when you want to get personal report of the students or the employees. Personal detailed reports. For example, let me show you for a new student report. We can click on that. And let's say we want to get all the students who are staff children. So as per the category. So you have to select that criteria here and you have to select the particular here. For example, let's take another criteria. So gender who are males. So I'm going to write M here. So for all the students who are males, I can give that report name as male students. Let's say for a particular batch. So I can, I'm going to tick on this batch and it's going to allow me to select which batch. So for G1A 2014, male students of G1A 2014 and what all do you want to see in the report? So it will be let's say their category the first name and the last name and we can even arrange them so these are the columns that are going to appear so let's say we want the first name first and after that we want the last name and then the batch and the student category so we can save it and it it is going to appear here and on clicking on it it is going to show the proper report so these are all the male students of this batch. So such kind of reports can be created for students as well as for employees. So this is about the custom report module. The next one would be custom import. So we have to go to data and reports. We have to go to custom import. And custom import is used when you want to feed bulk data in Fedina using Excel sheets. So you can click on this new here and for all the models, so for all these options that you see here, you can create templates, feed in data and upload it in Fedina. So if for employee admission, so all the employee data, student data, guardian data, attendance records of the students, exam scores of the students, book details in the library module, items, suppliers and stores in inventory can be viewed. So let me show you how to create it for one of the models, let's say for student. So we can even have student additional detail which are going to appear as columns in the Excel sheet. So I can give a name here. So let's say student admission. For a particular batch. And I also want, besides the normal fields that are going to appear in Excel sheet, I also want the passport field to be appearing. I can save it. And here I can click on this export CSV. So this is going to give me a template which I have to fill in. So this is the template that has to be filled in. So this is the template that has to be filled in. And once that template is filled in, you can import the data. So you have to choose the file that you filled and upload it. Once it is uploaded, it will be appearing inside Fedina. So all the students that you've put in that Excel sheet will be admitted in Fedina. And you'll be able to search them and create timetable for them, create examinations and do the normal functionalities in Fedina with the users.
So this is about the custom import. The next module that we are going to see is applicant registration module. So applicant registration, you can go to academics and applicant registration. And here, applicant registration is used when you want to open a course so that the students can apply for that course. So for that, you have to go to manage course. You have to click on add course. And here you have to select the course that you want the students to be able to apply for. Give the minimum score. This minimum score is the score that they should have in the previous course. So this minimum criteria will be shown to the admin once he get the student application. And the admin can discuss, uh, de uh, decide to either bypass it or consider it. And based on that, he can admit the student or reject the student. The sec next option is subject-based registration. So subject-based registration would mean you want the student to be able to select his electives, the elective subjects for this course. So you can make it active. If you make it active, it is going to give you an option to give minimum electives and maximum electives, which means let's say minimum is 1, maximum is 2. So the student can have to select minimum 1 elective and maximum 2 electives. And then you can take a fixed amount. Let's say, let's call it registration fee. This is not the normal fee. This is just the registration fee, the application fee. So it can be a fixed fee or it can be based on the subject. So if you make it active, you have to assign subject amounts to each of the subject and based on the elective that you are selecting, the amount will get assigned. Now to be able to assign amount, you have to go to manage course which is in settings and here you have to go to manage course click on the course that you want to put in for application and you will see this option here assign subject amount you have to select the subject and assign amount to it and based on the subject that the student is selecting in the application the amount will be decided so this is when you make subject-based collection active. If you make it inactive, it will always be a fixed amount irrespective of what are the electives or what are the subjects that he is selecting. Is active means this course is open for application. Is PIN system enabled means the students who are going to apply for this course will be given a unique PIN and only the students who are given those PINs will be able to apply. Enable approval system would mean that once the student has filled in the application form, it will go for the approval of the admin. Include additional details would mean, do you want to take the additional details from the student in his application form? So it is also going to ask for passport besides the normal fields that you see in the application form. And transfer attachments while allotting would mean that the students will be able to upload documents like ID proof, address proof, previous educational documents in the admission form and those documents will be automatically transferred to his profile when he is approved by the admin. So this is how you open a course for application. After you do that, that course will be appearing here. For example, let's say grade 6 is the one that I have 
open for application and now if I have selected pin enabled I have to go to manage pins and create the pins first so the validity of the pins so this is the period in which the students will be able to apply name of the pins so let's say 10 pins for grade 4 pin count so 10 are the pins active we can select that and for which course you want to create them so you will see these 10 pins are created these are some unique numbers that are automatically generated now to the student you have to give the name the URL of the school slash register and this can be accessed from anywhere so you have to give this to the student and the student have to select the course for which he wants to apply and you have to give the pin number to the student based on the pins that he generated and then you can submit it and the student will have to fill this application form all these details can be filled and you can see since it was a subject based registration this hundred amount that you see here is for the normal subject that I have assigned by going to manage subject and as per what I select here the amount will get added and here other details can be entered it also asks for guardian details additional details as per what I selected and here passport ID or uh, address proof can also be uploaded here and the student can save this application now here the student will get an option of this pay fee only if online payment is enabled otherwise the student has to print this application and take it to the admin and then pay this amount by cash or by any other means so let's say the student has not used online payment so he has to go to the admin the admin will click on view applicants against the course and he will be able to see the student along with the status and he has to click on the name of the student all the details as filled by the student are going to appear and you can see the student has not put the qualifying exam final score for the last course so it is asking the admin to mark as academically cleared so it can be done here and then this amount 450 is not paid online so it is asking to mark paid so the student has to come to the admin and give this amount and the last step is to enter the student into a batch so now I will be able to see the student inside Fidina so you can see this is the student that I just admitted the profile can be seen it can be edited at a later point so this is about the applicant registration plugin and Fidina the next one would be hostel so we have to go to administration we have to go to hostel and here we have to first create hostels and assign wardens so we have to click on this add hostel it is going to ask the name of the hostel the type of the hostel and any other information so once you do that it is going to show all the hostels here 
So this way all the hostels are created, the types are shown here. And for the hostel, we can even assign wardens. So we can go to manage warden and we can add a warden, select the department, select the employee and assign one or more wardens for a hostel. So once this is done, we can add rooms. So you have to click on this add room, select the hostel, give a room number. So let's say this is the room number. How many students are there in a single room in this hostel? What is the rent that is paid by each student? And how many rooms are there? So it would mean that in H1 hostel there are five rooms and each room can have two students and each student has to pay 2000 as the rent and the room number would be M01, 02, 03 till 05. So you will see here for this hostel it shows G01 to 05. So this way I have created some rooms, availabilities are the number of students and rents. So now I have to allocate this to room to a student, so you have to go to room allocation, search the student and click on the student and I will get an option to select the hostel for the student as per the gender the hostel is automatically coming. So I have to select the hostel and here I can allocate this room to the student. Once it is allocated, I can collect the fee. So I have to create fee collection. So here let me give some name. The batches for whom I have entered the students or allocated the students the rooms will only appear here. So the workflow should be admit all the students to the batch, add, create hostels, create rooms, create rents and then assign students to each and every room and then only schedule their fee collection. So here let me create fee collection for this batch. I can give the start and the end date and the due date. After due date, fine will be applicable. So once we have done that, we will be able to see the fee collection as well. So this is the one that I just created. Now I can collect the fees from the student by going to hostel fee pay which is one way. Another way is pay student hostel fee. In hostel fee pay you have to select the batch first. You have to select the fee collection and the students will appear who should be paying the fee and their rents will appear based on the host room rent and they can click on pay fees. Payment mode can be selected and the fees can be paid. So this is one way. Another way is you have to search the student and for this student fee collection and it is going to appear like this. And again select the payment mode and pay the hostel fee. We can see the students who have not paid the fees by going to defaulters, selecting the batch selecting the fee collection and it is going to give us the list of students who have not paid the fees. Then we can see the report of the hostel. So how many hostels are there? How many rooms are there? What is the type? Occupied rooms, the wardens. By clicking on available rooms we can see the availability as well and the other details by clicking on each room it is going to show us who has occupied that room.
So this is about the hostel plugin. The next one that we are going to see is inventory. So we have to go to administration and inventory. So now inventory is used when you have stores in your institution and you are selling the items or the employees are in need of items like chalks or dusters or markers etc. So in that case inventory is useful. So first thing is you have to do these th you have to do these two settings before creating a store you have to select the store category store category can be like consumable non consumable classroom related etc so like i have created a store category called classroom related then you can create the type of the store like for classroom related classroom items is another type of the store now while creating the store, it is going to ask what is the store type and store category. So as per what you have entered earlier, you can select them. So I, I have a store called classroom inventory inside the school. And it is store type is classroom items and store categories classroom related and invoice prefix. So if from this store I am selling any item what is the prefix of this of that invoice that will be generated so let's say i'm selling marker to a student or selling textbook to a student that invoice will have ci001 by default ci002 and so on so you will get to know that that invoice is for classroom inventory The next thing is to create item category. So the type of the item, beverages, canned, packed, etc. as per what items you have in the store. And the next step is to enter the items. So store items and click on new here. Select the store which is classroom inventory. So give the item name. Let's say it is markers. Give the code how many quantity you have in the store, what is the unit price of each marker, if any tax or additional charges were taken from you while you bought them, and batch number. So using batch number, later on we will be able to search this store item. And whether this item is sellable or not. So from classroom inventory, do you want to sell markers? If it is sellable, you have to select sellable here and select what is the category of the item. So this can be saved. So when you do this, it is going to appear as an item here. So when I select this, you will see I have chalks already, dusters and markers. And only markers are sellable and rest of them are not sellable. Some quantity is there, unit price is also displayed. So this is how you have to enter the store items. These store items, you may need them at a later point. So let's say out of these markers, 10 markers, I want 10 more markers. So in that case, you have to request a supplier for that. So we are going to add supplier details by going to supplier type and supplier now. So what is the type of supplier? So let me call, let's say, marker supplier. And I have to add the details of the supplier by going to supplier here, new. Select marker supplier, supplier name, contact number, address and all these details can be entered. And now the next step is indents. Now indents is an option that is used by an employee who wants to 
for example, who wants to take non-sellable items. For example, there's an employee who is in need of duster in a classroom. So he can request for duster. He is not going to buy a duster, but he's going to request for duster. So in that case, you have to come to indent. The employee, to be able to raise an indent, he should have a manager. Because the manager is the one who approves the requests and then only the item will be issued. So the employee has to click on new. Indent number will automatically appear. He has to select the store, so classroom inventory. Let's say he wants one duster. He can write that description here. He has to select the item and how much he require and how many are available will be shown here. Once he saves it, this indent will be successfully raised to his manager and the manager will be shown here. So the manager of this employee's admin itself. So when I view the indent, you will see that I am getting an option here to accept it or edit it or delete it. This option is coming because I am the manager of the employee who raised this indent. The status is pending, so I can click on accept and I can either issue it or reject it. So once it is issued, we can see the store items and we can see the availability, it will reduce by one. So you can see the available quantity was 161, which has now become 160. So indents will be raised by employees who have managers. Managers have to approve the indents and only after approval the item will be made available to the employee. Then we have purchase order. Purchase order is created by inventory manager. Purchase order is when you may want to maintain the quantity of store items. For example, 160 was the available quantity. Let's say we want 10 more. So we are going to raise a purchase order with the supplier. So purchase order number will automatically appear. In which store do we want it? What is the supplier? Let's say we want dusters. And we can select what we want and what is the quantity. Let's say we want to make the quantity back to 161. So I want one duster that I've issued to an employee and I'm requesting it from a seller now, supplier now. So once the purchase order is created, again it has to be issued by the manager of the one who is raising the purchase order. Now purchase order is issued. Now the next step is to generate goods receipt number, GRN. So you have to click on this GRN and here click on new. GRN number will automatically appear. Purchase order for which you are creating this GRN, you have to select. So what we are doing here is, we are creating a receipt when we actually get that one duster in the institution from the supplier. This invoice number is what will be written on the supplier's receipt. GRN date is when you received in the institution. Invoice date is as per what the supplier gives you and it can be saved. So once this is done, now let's go back to store items and see the quantity of dusters. It is back to 161. So this happens because the GRN is created. It means that we have received one duster for which the purchase order was requested. 
Now the next thing is billing. The billing is used when you want to sell items for a store. For example, from classroom inventory, let's say I want to sell marker, which is a sellable item. Two, it can be sold to parent, employee or student, either of these. So let me select employee, whose name will automatically appear. In case you are shipping, this employee is not coming to your store, but you are shipping, you can enter that address here. And here additional charges or discounts that you want to give to this employee can be written. And if he is paying this amount to you, you can select is paid. But if you do not select is paid, you will be able to edit this invoice later on. If is paid is selected, editing is not possible. So invoice is created. When we click on print, we will be able to see the receipt like this. We can see the invoices for a particular store like here. And you can even note the invoice number. And when you click on it, you can see the details as well. Then we have reports. So these are the general reports or the sales report. So general reports are related to indents, purchase order or GRN. For example, the indents that are for pending in a particular date can be selected or that are issued. Then we can see the sales report. It can be item wise, day wise or invoice. Let's see item wise. So for a particular store, from within a particular duration, which all invoices are paid can be seen. Paid, unpaid or all of them. What is the amount that is collected? We can see for a particular day, for a particular store. And similarly, invoice report. So all the invoices, invoice number will appear. When we click on it, it is going to show us the other details. So this is about the inventory module of Fudina. The next one that we're going to see is library. So we have to go to academics and library. And here we can add books in library by going to manage books and clicking on add books. Now before adding books we can do some additional details. We can add some additional details. So when we add a book these additional details will also be appearing. So this is similar as we did as we do for student and employee. So it means that I am going to ask age group, ISBN and price. So Let's now go to add books and we can select the bar additional uh, book addition method which can be either general so by the book number or it can be by the barcode. So if you have a barcode reader you need to just plug it in and read the barcode and the barcode number will automatically appear here. If you're using the general method, we have to write the book number. We have to give some title. We have to give some author and tags. So tags are in relation to the book and we'll be able to search the book using the tags later on. We can even create our custom tags and what are the number of copies. So it means beginning with A50, I will have three books till 52. And additional details as I just showed you can be attached to the book.
and we'll be able to see these here. So you will see three books, 50, 51, 52 is added and the status is available. When we view the book, it is going to show the other details as well. Now this book can be either issued or reserved. Reserve book option will be appearing for the students and employees as well. Students will not be able to issue the book through Fedina. Only librarian or the admin can do it. But the student can reserve a book. So he will get only this option. And when he clicks on it and the admin tries to issue the book to someone else, it is going to show a message to the admin saying that the book is reserved by the student. So admin can take a decision to issue the book or not to issue the book. So let me show you how to issue the book. Book can be issued to the students or the employees. So we have to select the admission number or the employee number. So let me issue it for an employee. So it is going to show like this. What is the issue date? What is the due date? can be selected from here and the book can be issued. Now the book can also be searched. So you have to select the book. book can also be issued by going to this issue book here. Book can be returned. So this book here, we can search this book. Let me issue a book once again. So we can go to issue books. We have to search the book by the barcode or the book number. So this is the book and employee. Let's give it to an employee. Select it. And we can then return the book. So we can search this book and click on it and return option is coming here. In case the due date is exceeded, you are going to get one more option here to enter the library fine. So this way the book can be returned. Book can be reissued by going to book renewal. And here we can click on it. We'll be able to edit the due date of the book. Then we can manage the barcodes. So we can search a book. Let's say I know by the title I need to write the first three letters. and. If I have the barcode reader, the barcode will automatically get entered here. Then we can see the movement log, who all have issued the book for today, who all have returned the book, all that will be coming here. What is the book number? Then we can see the library fines for a particular duration. So between a particular duration, let me select, I'll be able to see the library fines here. Who has paid how much library fine and on what date. So then we have manage tags. 
we can see the tags that we have attached to a book. We can edit them by clicking on them or we can delete them. But it also shows that these tags are being used in the books. So this is about the library module in Fedina. Then we are going to see the online exam. So we have to go to academics. We have to go to examination. And here we have to go to online exam. And here new online exam. So here we have to give a name of the exam. For example, let's say we are having a pretest for a particular batch. Let's say this is the batch. And all the students will appear on the right hand side. And we can even select whether this exam is general or it is for a particular subject. If it is for a subject, we have to select the batch and the subject for which it is applicable. We can select that. And whether the exam is only objective, so it will only have objective questions or it will have both objective and descriptive questions can be selected here. And we can assign evaluators because in case of descriptive questions, an employee has to check or evaluate those questions and give marks. So I'm selecting this employee. Sorry, I need to enter the start date. So here we can select the start date, let it be today. And what is the duration can be selected. And what is the pass percentage? So above 40 will be called as passed, below 40 will be called as failed. And we can create this exam. Now here we have to create the questions and answers. So let's, let me give 50 marks for this question. This is the descriptive question. So I can select here what is the type of question, descriptive. So this is one of the descriptive questions. The second question, which is again for 50 marks. I can give some options here. So let it be objective. Let's say this is option A, option B and A is the answer and I can create it. So this is how the question paper will look like. More questions can be added. And then if the students have to appear for it, you have to click on publish exam. Then only the students will get an option to appear. So let me see a student of this batch. So we can go to this batch. And I'm going to log in as one of the students. And here we can go to academics and online exam and the student will get an option to select that exam and click on go and he can appear for this exam like this. So he has to write the descriptive questions answer and he has to select the objective questions answer. And duration will be shown here. And he will get this warning. And now the evaluator who was assigned to evaluate has to log in and has to evaluate this answer. So let me log in as that employee. So now I'll be able to log in and go to academics and examination, evaluate online exams. And this exam will be appearing. I can click on evaluate. Select the batch, the student who has appeared. I can click on evaluate. And based on the answer, I can give marks. And after I've given marks, I can publish the result. And once I publish the result, the student will be able to see the status as passed or failed. The student will also be able to view the answer sheet. So let me log in back as that student, which was user 6. And he can go to academics, examination, online exam. 
and view results. You can see this exam is coming here. He can view answer sheet, marks and whether the result is passed or failed. The next plugin that we are going to see is transport. So we have to go to administration and transport. And we can set routes here. So you have to click on add route. And now let's say your route is destination 2. So it's like let's say from your school the end point is destination 2. The name of the end point is destination 2. So that is what you have to create first. You have to create the destination first. What is a fare? So what is a ticket fare? From your school, from your institution to the end point that is to be mentioned here and in main route do not select anything. In main route, do not select anything if the destination here is the end point. So we are creating the end point first. Now after this, we are going to create, let's say we are going to create a point that is in between your school to your destination. So let's say that is point 1. So you have to give here point 1. You have to give the fare, ticket fare. So from school to point 1 and what is the main route? So all the destinations will be appearing here. Since destination 2 was the last point, so you have to select it as this. So it means point 1 lies between your school, your institution to destination 2 which is the end point. So in this way you can create as many points, point 2, point 3 and so on and always select the main route to be the last point and you can change the cost of ticket. So this way you have to first create the routes, then you have to create the vehicles. So you have to add a vehicle, so here you have to give the name of the vehicle, number of the vehicle, what is the route that is going to follow? Again, all the endpoints will be appearing here. What are the number of seats that are available? Can be selected. So in this way, you can add the vehicles and then you can go to transport and assign it to either a student or an employee. So we are assigning a vehicle to a student or an employee. So let me search a student. So we can click on assign and we have to select the route. So this is the route that he is going to drop at. This is the destination. So it means this student is going to drop at the same last point. Or if we select this, it means the student is going to drop at this point. What is the vehicle and what is the fare? So we can assign the details, the vehicles like this. Then we can schedule the fee collection like we did for hostel. So here we can give the transport name, transport fees we can create, start, end date and due date. And if you want to include employees, it means that employees you also might have assigned and till this date, till the start date, the employees that you are assigning will all be included and they will also have to pay fees, which is transport fees. So to pay fees, you can click on pay fees, search the student and fee collection for the student that you just created will be appearing and the amount, the fare will be appearing and you can pay the fees, which is the transport fees. And we can see the list of students who have not paid the <clears throat> who have not paid the fee collection. So if the fee collection is there, let me see if it is there for some batch. If it is there, it will be appearing here and we can see the defaulters. Even employee defaulters can be seen. So for a particular fee like this.
so this is about fees then we have report we can view what all vehicles are there what are their endpoints how many number of seats are available how many are the total number of seats by clicking on it we can see who all have occupied what is the type of the passenger where they are getting down and what is the ticket fare that they are paying so this is about the transport module fully the last plugin that is left is form builder So for form builder, we have to go to collaboration and forms. And using form builder, we can create public, private or feedback forms. So the first step is we have to create form template. So we have to give a name here, name of the template. So let's say it is feedback for feedback form and we can create the questions here so let's say it is a drop down so we have to drag it and drop it here it is going to appear like this we have to click on this you can see it is getting highlighted we have to click on it and on the left hand side these options will appear which we need to fill so whether this is a mandatory question, so you can select that. What is a question? So let's say we can give this as the question. And we can give a description. And what are the options? So let's say we can give some options. We can add new options. And we can assign weightages to the option. So if an option has more weightage, we can assign the bigger number. And the rest of the options, relatively, we can assign less. So we can create another question like this. So let's say it is again a radio button. So you have to click on this. We can select whether it is mandatory or not. We can select another question. We can give a description. And again, we can assign some weightages. So this way, we can create, save this template. Once we save this template, it is going to show us what is the template that we've created. Now we can go to form templates. We can see this is a template and we can use it. Now we can use it either to the public, which means to all the users in Fedina, or to the selected users, so to employees and batches, or we can use it as a feedback form. So let me show you how to use it as a feedback form. So we can give a form name. So let's say, So this is the feedback form name. And who is it targeted to? It means for which teacher do you want to create this feedback form? So let's say this is for English department for both the teachers. And who all should be able to mark this feedback? So that would be the batch which is K1B 2014. So let's say this is the batch all these students should be able to mark and only the parent or only the student or both of them can also be selected so once this is published so let me log in as one of the students so here we can go to collaboration and forms and here feedback forms we are going to get this form and we will be able to select the target as one of the teachers so let's say for this batch both the teachers are teaching I can select one of the teachers and assign the feedback for this teacher 
I can again select another target and give feedback for another teacher. So this is how the feedback can be given. So this is the feedback form in Fidina. Now let's see what are the other options that are available for the admin. Public and private forms can also be created. But the difference is that for feedback form, we'll be able to see the analysis. So we'll be able to see how many counts are there for each option, who all have marked each option. So we'll be able to see that and we can analyze the feedback of the teachers, of the target. So I am logging in as an admin now. And here we can go to collaboration and forms. And form templates we have already seen. We can reuse the templates. And manage forms is going to show all the forms, what are their types, public, private. We can close the forms so they will no longer be available to the participants. Forms are the forms that are shared with the logged in user. Feedback forms are the forms that are shared that are for which the logged in user is the participant. So if this logged in user is the participant, he'll be able to see the feedback form and he'll be able to fill in. And then we can go to this manage forms, click on the feedback form and we'll be able to see the analysis. What are the number of responses? So you can see one response is there and the fields are like this. We can see the analysis for a particular target. Let's say for this target. So this is how it's going to show. So this is about the form builder plugin in Fedina. So we are done with the add-on modules now.